Hello there. In this demonstration, we're going to see how to use the TI-8384 to conduct a hypothesis test about a mean. Only in this case, the standard deviation, the population standard deviation, sigma, is assumed to be known. And this doesn't happen very often, but it could, I suppose. And when, um, when that is the case, we actually use a z-distribution, and the name of the function in the TI is called z-test, uh, appropriately so. Um, and I will go through these details of the sequence of events in the context of this example. Okay, so um, in this example, we want to see if the mean head circumference of male college students is um, less than that of... Uh, the adult male population in general. Um, so we have some original information. As been reported, the mean head circumference of adult males is 55.90 centimeters, and the standard deviation of that population is 1.7. Um, so we take a survey or a sample of 63 male college students and their mean head circumference was 55.12. So the mean from the sample is um, clearly below the mean from the population for adult males. And so we want to test the claim that male college students have um, on average smaller heads than adult males. Seems like a good as anything to test, right? Um, so, we will assume the head circumferences are normally distributed, and we will also assume that the population standard deviation for male college students is the same as for the adult males in general. In other words, the population standard deviation is assumed to be 1.7. Right? Okay, so, um, we need to set things up right, because even when we're using the TI, the setup is very critical. So in this case, we're claiming that the mean head circumference of all college students is less than that for uh, adult males. Um, so we're, we're claiming that the mean is less than 59.90. And the null hypothesis gets the equal to sign. And the alternate, in this case, will support the claim. Right, so now we have it all set up. And we will let the um, calculator do most of the hard work for us. So we're going to get to the z-test function. And the way we get there is we hit the stat button, go over to tests, and it's the first one. So we just hit enter. And here it's requesting um, whether we're going to use data. And if we want to use data to conduct this test, we actually have to create a list. And since we don't actually have the data, we're going to use the stats from the problem described. So we'll keep stats highlighted, hit enter. And then the next thing it's asking us is what is the mean from the null hypothesis? That's mu sub zero or mu naught. And so we have to go to the null hypothesis. That mean is 55.9. So we put that in there. And notice the next one is a sigma. That's for a population standard deviation. We have that. We assumed it was 1.7. We'll put in 1.7 for the population standard deviation. The next thing it wants is the sample mean from our college students. So the sample mean is 55.12. So we'll put that in there. Um, hit enter. And the sample size was 63. So we'll put in 63. Then we have to choose between a two-tailed test, a left-tailed test, or a right-tailed test, depending on the direction of the inequality or the not equal to sign. And you get that straight from the alternate hypothesis. So I have a less than sign in the alternate hypothesis. So this is indeed a left test. So we will highlight the less than symbol. Hit Enter. Go down to Calculate and have it do the work for us. And the first thing it spits out, it repeats um, basically the alternate hypothesis here. It's repeating that we're claiming the mean is less than 55.9. So that's good. Then it gives us the test statistic, negative 3.61417. So that's a, 
As far as z-score goes, that, that's pretty big. I mean, it's negative, but it's a big negative. And then it gives it the p-value, but it gives it to us in scientific notation. So what this is saying is that the p-value is 1.354 times 10 to the negative 4. There's an exponent of negative 4. Um, so that's what our p-value is, is. It's pretty small, right? Um, then it repeats the sample mean and the sample size. But once you get to this point, you can see the p-value is definitely smaller than alpha. So we get to reject the null hypothesis. And if we're rejecting the null hypothesis, that's good, because that means we can support our alternate hypothesis, or support the claim here. So when all things said and done, we get to say that the sample data supports the claim that male college students have a mean head circumference uh, below the mean for adult males. Um, the one thing the TI doesn't do, and I sort of wish it did, was it doesn't give you the critical values of z. Um, but if we have one of the tables like we do in the, in the book, the critical values are, are very easy to find, right? They're right below the z table here. And if you notice, what we're looking for here is a 0.05 significance level. It is a left tail test, so the critical value is negative 1.645. So it's easy enough to compare this test statistic, negative 3.64, with the critical value. And indeed, the test statistic is pretty deep in the rejection region. So we reject the null hypothesis. And again, we, we come to that um, identical conclusion by looking at the p-value. So you can use either method, but if you want to use the critical value method, you really have to have a table around. Um, Okay, but in, in any case, the, the calculator does quite a bit of the work for you by getting the test statistic and the p-value. Uh, the, the key thing to remember, though, is that when you, get, when you, when you start this off, um, it asks for some pretty important stuff. You don't want to get this wrong. You want to get the mean from the null hypothesis. And you also have to clearly define what type of test it is. So. It doesn't do all the work. You have to set it up to, to get it going in the right direction. But once you do that, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward.